Hello, I'm live. Um, okay, I just want to check that I can see if you're here, you can um, you can say hi and I will see you. Hi, everybody. I'm trying this new way of uh, delivering live because I want to show you some books and for that I need to share the screen. So this is a special live uh, video that I'm doing here and it's dedicated to uh, the International Women's Day. So first of all, if you're here and watching me, I can't see you. So you can write something and maybe then I will see that you're here. I hope. Um, that's why I'm looking to check. Um, anyhow, so, um, anyhow, why am I so passionate about this topic? I want to share with you something. So uh, I'm Revital, I'm a children's storyteller. I've been, I've, I've had my own business since 2003. Okay, so I've built this business from 2003 because it was a combination of my love for children, books, acting, and being a young mother uh, and wanting to be a lot with my uh, children. And it worked perfectly for me. But over the years, I had more and more children, three children. And about the age of 40, I started feeling that my life is not really exactly what it was supposed to be. And what I mean by that is that I felt I wanted more, but that something was holding me. And what was holding me was that if I want to do more things uh, for my career, it means that I will be less with my children. And I felt it was a wrong thing and I should be 100% totally for my children. And it was around that time that I started uh, learning more about feminism and about gender equality. And, uh, and I saw the whole world and environment in a new way. Suddenly I said, hey, you know, I'm just exactly what I was supposed to be. I'm, I'm, I'm the main child uh, take, uh, take care, you know, I, I take care of the children. I'm the main uh, take giver, caregiver. And my husband is the main bread giver. Okay, just like most of the families I see. And the leaders, most of the leaders are men. Most of the most richest people are men. Most of the entrepreneurs that are successful are men. Most of the women, so many of us work as teacher, kindergarten teachers, as something that you earn less. And it's as if I started seeing everything different, okay? So that's where I started. And it was deciding that I can be a, a great mother, even though I develop my career exactly how I want to, that uh, changed things for me. I had to get rid of stuff that I learned over the years, sometimes consciously and sometimes unconsciously. And how's that to do with storytelling to children? So you can say that um, there's no problem at all. We are all um, equality. It was a problem of the past. But actually, from the moment our children uh, are born, if they are a boy or they are a girl, they're immediately attached characters. And the most stereotyped characters are that men are boys will be more active in football and game and players and they go against and leagues and girls will be love and hair and cute baby and more the beauty we don't even sometimes feel it that we are uh, acting differently to uh, a, a baby or a toddler that is a boy or a girl but um Researchers show that uh, if you dress a toddler like a girl, you will see that uh, the kindergarten teacher or someone who, who takes care of it will treat them differently, will offer them different toys. 
Um, we are all raised up in books that are really, really problematic in what they offer girls to be. So we all want to be princesses, but what are those princesses? So the classical princesses, Disney princesses are really, um, you have Cinderella that in order to, to stop being um, um, a, a nearly slave in her house, she has to be extremely beautiful and that a prince will choose her. Or um, if you are the little mermaid, this is even more terrible. It's okay to abandon your family drastically, change your body and give up your strongest talent in order to get your man. Once he sees your pretty face, only a witch spell could draw his eyes away from you. So all those um, uh, fairy tales, movies, ads, they all uh, give us an un conscious uh, way of looking at women, looking at men. And it's from a very, very young age. And that's why in the reality, and again, here are with toys, uh, all the pink toys for girls, all the blue for boys, but it's not only the color, it's boys, let's uh, teach them to build things, girl only to put makeup. Why is this, okay? These things make us, uh, have different choice than if we would be uh, uh, raised up differently and in an open way and less gender stereotype. And that's why we see that it influences the reality. That's why uh, Camila Harris could be a vice president after hundreds uh, of years of having a male white uh, vice presidents, okay? So uh, it's not accidentally that we have so, so few uh, women leaders. This is because we are all raised to have specific choices. Just like I was, I had specific choices and it was natural for me to be like that. And only when I was aware of it, I could decide to change it. So how is it um, with uh, children books, okay? First of all, children books can actually help us uh, build core values, okay? Fundamental beliefs, guiding principles that dedicate our behaviors. And they can do it very subtle. So I'm going to give you some examples of children's books. Is someone here so I can, uh, I'm, I'm so, uh, I, I never know if, if you're here or not in this, uh, in this live. Okay, so I want to give you an example of a book you can't really buy because it's in Hebrew, but I have to give you this example because it's exactly what I want to share with you. Here is a book that is not feminist at all. It's for toddlers. It's really funny and nice. It's called Where is by Tamar Bergman, illustrated by Ruto Modan. Okay, so I'm just translating for you. Mom brought Nani to grandfather and man, grandmother and gave him a kiss and went away. And then you see Nani that says, where's my mom? And where is his mom? Maybe she's, oh, sorry, just a second. Maybe she's gone back to work. And what is mom's work? She's a doctor, okay? Maybe she's going to, um, to do some sports. Maybe she went to buy flowers to grandmother. And maybe she went to drink lemonade with Uncle Irmi. Mom came back to grandmother and grandfather. Now mom is asking, where is Nani? Maybe he's hiding in the, in the yard. Now, as you see, now it's going to be a game, okay? Because we are looking for Nani and we're, checking where he is. Maybe he's under the bed. Can you see Noni, by the way? He's behind the curtains. Where is Noni? asks mom. Can you guess where he is? Ta-da, here I am, Noni laughs. And they all laugh and look at the end picture. And when dad arrived, he found everyone. Now, why is this a good gender equality book? Because 
it's a fun book. It's a good book for toddlers. But what's good that it challenges the stereotype uh, gender roles. So as you see, grandmother, grandfather is cooking. Mother is a doctor. Father here is a violin player. Uh, mother has a full life. She does sports. She has a career. She meets friends, okay? She's not the main uh, uh, caregiver, okay? That's an example of really in a subtle way to give us uh, this uh, information. Now I want to, to give another example of a book that I always recommend, but this is the opposite type. So I always recommend on the book, there's no such thing as a dragon. I think it's a genius book, but one thing it's not. It shows us again a mother that the mother gives the food. It shows us again here on the left and the right uh, picture, that the mother cleans the house. She's cleaning the house. Uh, I want to be number one, aware of it. And number two, I want to show actively my children different kinds of woman representation. Now, the last years, there are a lot of books that show us this. Uh, these are actually classical books. So these are all books that uh, I recommend. Elephants Don't Do Ballet. P.P. Longstocking, the paperback, but, and, okay, and I want to show you another book called Beautiful, I just had a post about it, which takes all the sentences that, that, um, that are very stereotype about girls, but turns it with the illustrations. So here are two examples. Beautiful girls know all about makeup, but what you see that the makeup she has is being a captain. Uh, being, being a pirate. Beautiful girls uh, move gracefully. And as you see, when they move gracefully, they're active, they're adventurous, they're playing, they're competing, okay? So that's the example. Again, the illustrations teach us the expectations of a gender. Uh, so the last years, there are a lot of books about women scientists, women artists, women leaders, okay? Sometimes those books have a problem that they're a bit, uh, um, you know, informative and they don't offer an, uh, an emotional experience. So you see that here is Rosa Parks, two books. I would recommend just from the picture, using the one underneath, which immediately shows you a conflict. You see, she's sitting and the white policeman is going in front of her. So again, when you read those kinds of books, you can ask your children, what do you think Rosa feels when this policeman is talking to her? How is she feeling? Is she afraid? And, and things like that. That's how you uh, attach children to the emotional experience. And here I want to give another um, example called Zog. You know it by Julia Donaldson and Excel Scheffler. And here again, you could read the whole book and not even think it's about gender equality. But actually, Zog doesn't want to be a, a dinosaur like he's supposed to be. And the princess doesn't want to be a princess like she's supposed to be. And the knight here doesn't want to be a knight like he's supposed to be. And at the end, they all decide to do different things. And that's what we want for ourselves and for our children, that they are free to have their own choices, no matter what their gender is. Just a second. Okay. So um, if you've listened to this um, really awkward and full of tech problem live, I'd love if you write a comment, if you agree, if you don't agree, if you think it has its place, it doesn't have its, its place. What do you think about the books that I recommended? Do you recommend a, a book that challenges the roles of boys and girls and stereotypes? Is it important? Think about it because today is Women's International Women's Day. And I think it's, re it's really important and I do offer my children actively books that teach them that. And it helps because children are like a sponge and whatever we give them, 
these will be their core values, their beliefs. So it's very important. So I hope you enjoyed it. And say to me hi. And I'm trying to stop it. Bye.